So it all started in the very first lockdown we had in March and I kind of wanted to just learn something new and use the time because I kind of I, I had no excuses not to. So I decided to go back into recording and try and relearn how to use Pro Tools because I hadn't touched it you know, since we'd studied it at college and uni. Um, so I thought, oh, I'll, I'll get into this. But the trouble with recording is you need songs to, you know, to build. It went from an idea of collaborating with maybe different people and trying something new to, hey, screw it, this sounds good. Why not use it in the band that already exists? Um, and, you know, I'm sure the guys would love you know, these ideas, although they are very different from what we've done. And then from there on, it kind of just created a, a sound that we'd been looking for for so long um, because we've had members drop in and out and blah, blah, blah. But, you know, it, it, it felt good. It felt really good. So going from that and then into a studio was, uh, <laughs> was pretty daunting. <laughs> lot of pressure on John to kind of do everything himself because obviously he had to do the 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 rhythm guitars the lead guitars and there's quite a lot of fiddly bits and do the vocals on top of that so there was a point where there was kind of like a lot of pressure and a kind of kind of a lot of panic going along going okay we're kind of pressing on this album quite quickly we can get this done in this time but there's also the added pressure of kind of doing the vocals. So obviously when it came to doing... So we did it kind of a weird way. So we did um, uh, rhythm, bass, rhythm, bass, rhythm, bass. And then we added... We chucked some vocals in. And obviously there were times where he was quite frustrated that, um, that he couldn't quite get his vocal parts done. And a good thing Neil was there because Neil could kind of go, right... You're doing good, but maybe we could do this. And I know by the end of the end of the kind of end of the recording sessions, he'd be quite ropey and quite kind of quite stressed out because you know he. To be honest, he did most of the work during the album. I just sat and played bass. Dan did his drums. We we kind of know what our jobs are to do. John kind of kind of took the helm and kind of put everything on his shoulders on his album, and especially where kind of. Um, this album is kind of, you know, his baby, his kind of, his his crowning achievement, and you know, we and Dan just just needed to support him, and you know, we got through it in the end. Day, <laughs> yeah, you do look gorgeous, mate. Gorgeous. Day three, day three, Dan's done. Oh. All right. Uh, guitars, all done, all done. yeah, all done. guitars, um, all and bass, and vocals, <laughs> we're taking a song for some time, um, it's just the way our producer has been doing that, um, so yeah, exciting day, you get to hear the tracks come more alive, day by day. <laughs> well John wrote, well, wrote pretty much everything on the songs, um, he was up front just whacking out the songs blasting them over to me putting so much pressure on me because I was not as uh, not as active as I should have been seeing as we were getting quite close to the uh, the crunch time um, but you know he kept on and we were just bouncing the songs back and forth and any little edits that was needed to be done he was instant straight back on it next day i'd have a new new set of demos sent to me where i'd have to re-record everything and put it back but you know we we got straight in there with all the all the songs that john had worked his worked his absolute buns off to and uh we you know i once again like i i'm very impressed with the way that john sort of with the ethic that he put into it you know it kept me on my toes and I like anything that challenges me, so, um, you know, he, he, good work, good work. So I try again, so I just can't, I was like, huh? here we go, yep. <laughs> I have known John since high school, 
and oh. he kind of he followed me to i always say that he followed me to, to um platform one but um he, he has been a constant person in my entire life um when any road first formed true story i was quite jealous of the group because it was like my best friends kind of like up there on stage and doing what they wanted to do so when john asked me to play bass for um for a halloween show i took the opportunity to do it and that's kind of how i joined the group and ever since it kind of stuck Say like Western's doing. Day four in the studio. Bad headache. Uh, so during the recording process, we had our own all kind of room to kind of um, uh, uh, to socialise, to kind of sort of sit down, relax, have our lunches, kind of thing. So we play a bit of foosball, a bit of darts. Um, you know, just we kind of we practiced our parts you know because we had the demos and kind of thing so we kind of bought our instruments up when we weren't needed and um we just you know just practiced practiced socialized you know watched a bit of south park which was fun um <clears throat> uh, but most of the time we were just um it was only between those kind of lunches and kind of like um preparing our roles in in this recording that we were really kind of upstairs because you know we would want to be we wanted to be part of this recording experience and kind of come down and kind of watch and give each other kind of um praise and um critique because obviously you've got to have a little bit of a critique during those recording processes to kind of you know if if you know it's take it takes a whole team to make this record what it was and it was a team effort and you know we all did our bit He has been an absolute writing machine during this process. Um, he is always constantly writing and he wrote too many bloody songs. Um, and I am, um, you know, ooh, ooh, the best thing about it is I'm so kind of happy about being about this band. And when it came today, kind of, uh, day three when it came to kind of doing the guitars and vocals um completely because you know where he wrote all the songs he completely smashed through it um and when it came to kind of um uh, vocal takes obviously we wrote an album before um neil kind of pushed his uh, vocal limit to the max and to be honest i think he didn't even expect that he could make those noises <laughs> before each vocal take i'd go upstairs and i'd just start warming up and also going through the lyrics and making any changes um anything that i felt oh that doesn't sound right or that doesn't quite fit right i would just change it change it there and then 
Um, Because I didn't want to walk away and feel like, oh, that's stuck on there forever now. I mean, there are still odd bits, don't get me wrong, because there always is. But, you know, doing that really does help. It really, really helps. And having someone like Neil as well, um, that's... I I can't say how, like, important having someone like Neil there was. um, Because I'm not a trained vocalist at all. I only sing in this band. I don't don't really know what I'm doing. I just monkey my way through singing um, each time I get up there and just hope it's right. But Neil knows what it is that um, you're trying to you're trying to express. He knows how to put vocals into a song and how um, the vocal melodies work. Um, so he really filled me with a lot of confidence and he also would you know sort of give me ideas while I was in there and just say, hey, why don't you try this? Maybe give this a go. Or you know, you'd say, oh, um, let's try a new idea here. And his input was really, really important. And you know, I can't thank him enough because he actually made me sound good. <laughs> Social distance. Who's a pretty boy then? Mm-hmm. You're worse than a budgie. You spend more time in the mirror than a paradise. Other than getting a little bit wound up about, you know, making mistakes during solo parts or lead lines and stuff, like pretty much held it together. Even when things were going a little bit shaky, you know, you just went back to the start, restarted again and and just smashed through it and to be honest the parts that i did here where i was actually awake um because i the whole thing was a a surprise to me when i eventually curled up out of the sofa um and you know he smashed it absolutely smashed it right in recording side of things keeping us motivated boosting morale as well you know even going down and buying the drinks you know it was it pretty much pretty much kept kept on the leadership side of it and you know probably without john uh megalith may not exist <laughs> well any road wouldn't exist anyway to be fair because <laughs> you know <laughs> really well drums sound good you know he's working hard we've got a plan for the week you know yeah you know I like this place. I like we can just come up here and chill out, and not we're not sat in the recording studio in the studio. Studio, we just got a little chill out space. Just... Yeah, it's nice, isn't it? Because then you can just feel like it is. You kind of feel like um, yeah, it's almost like you're still doing recording, but you're not. Yeah, exactly. Sure. Yeah, <laughs> it's like a little clubhouse. Yeah. Well, actually, that last day is probably the only one I could completely remember because I think it was the only day other than my days where I stayed awake the entire time because I was so excited to look forward to what we'd achieved. And to be honest, it was a lot of it was a surprise where I had been sort of coming and going in and out of um, Tom's and John's sessions. I, you know, the entire thing was almost like I was hearing it with fresh ears anyway. And even though we'd spent hours and hours and hours practicing and getting it to a point where we actually felt comfortable recording, thanks to Neil, you know, because, you know, if it was just us in the studio, we probably would have been distracted 24-7. But Neil kept us on point. You know, he was so quick with the changeovers. He'd even have these little breaks where he'd be like, here you go, have a little snippet. And we were like, it was it was great fun working with him. And to be honest, like, I definitely definitely recommend blacksmiths is it the old blacksmiths that's the one old blacksmiths studio in portsmouth orchestra section any road orchestra neil was such a visionary he you know, I, I, you know, I've worked with a couple of producers and engineers in my life, but like Neil was just on another level. Uh, he knew what vision we had for the band and this recording, 
and he he smashed it out of the park. He that last day we had with him, he was like, right. So we've done all this. This sounds like it needs this and this. So he was, you know, especially with you know Infinite Circle. He he was like, right, okay, let's put some strings to this. And he's just he bought every track alive on that album. And I'll be forever grateful to him for kind of letting us come in, these three ragtag guys from, you know, from the Isle of Wight, he, he, during lockdown and everything, giving his experience in the music industry. And he was just absolutely brilliant. I wouldn't, I, I you know, I'm hoping, I, you know, I'm hoping that we go back. We we go back there and, you know, album number three, we go back to Neil because he was just such a pleasure to work with. He, he you know, the moment we came in, you know, he listened to the demos. He knew exactly what was going on. He knew what sound we were going for. He took our inputs in. He had his own inputs. He had a lot of inputs in on during this album. You know, he's so... He's so talented, and he uh, and I can't thank him enough. And you know, I miss you, Neil. It's made it so much more full. Got it, it's um, all we put it on every song. Oh, yeah, yeah, it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't just ruin it. it, absolutely ruin it. It just gives this particular one some special. <laughs> <laughs> Just a rock. And I like, I know mix wise, I don't like it all the moment. Yeah, I, I think going into this middle eight, it's quite cool that it does go to guitar. Yeah. It's yeah. Absolutely. The guitar. There's nothing here. Yeah. Yeah, I like that because you've got enough of the vocals going on, I suppose. And then you've got that extra guitar part underneath. Yeah, so it's a string might be able to double this guitar and come down. Oh, yeah. Once there's a bit of effect on that guitar, maybe like a few days rebound. Kind of go like the edge on it. Well, <laughs> but not as crazy. We've got that sort of like pizzicato bit on the guitar already. Like they, yeah. So it doesn't really need it as much as it really. Megalith. <clears throat> what an album. Well, I'm biased, I can say that. Um, <clears throat> it actually kind of goes to show, like, even if like, somebody who doesn't, you know, doesn't have too much confidence in themselves, you know, as a band as well, you know, we we don't gig as much as we, we should be, we don't, re we don't rehearse as much as we should be, but, you know, just by putting in that bit extra effort, and getting getting a, a decent studio involved as well, you can actually come out with a fantastic sounding record. And it, I, I, I do still listen to it, you know. We worked so hard on it. I remember, you know, receiving songs and songs and songs and having to whittle it down to that. You know, it was hard because there were so many good songs. And... You know the experience of going you know to the studio and having that experience was incredible because you know in my career of music you know this is this this was the big leagues this was this was a step up and I wouldn't I wouldn't change it for anything the the time we spent there and going in and creating this and I remember walking away from it and being so pumped up going just remember looking at the guys and I was going I was going we've made something special here we've made something you know we put all our heart and soul into this and you know I can't thank you guys enough for kind of letting me in in, in on this and you know it was just it was it was so pure and so special that you know, I hope we can make this again and, you know, hopefully, you know, you enjoy the album and as much as we do, because I remember 
listening back to the demos and then says you know going oh my god this is amazing you know it was just it was just it was just pure recordings you know from the from from the studio sessions it wasn't like the final you know i was going oh my god this is amazing you know this can't sound any better and then we sent we took a few notes back send it back came back and even better and i was like oh my god this is this is the greatest thing you know i'll you know to this day i'll ever accomplish as a musician when i've been asked about how i feel about this album um i found it very difficult to answer because firstly i don't want to sound like i'm blowing smoke up my own ass and that i'm egotistical but at the same time the work's not done and yeah there's many things i can change about it but i think above all i feel proud above all of that i feel proud i feel proud of how it sounds i feel proud of the the writing that's in it i feel even more proud above all, all even all of that of all the work that tom's put in and dan's put in all the practicing that the pair of them have done and how much they've just thrown themselves into the moment really and just helped craft what this album is you know and yeah i just hope that everyone else enjoys it you know and if you don't then there's more pointers that we can learn from hey that's no bad thing but you know at the moment i think now's the time to enjoy it that energy that you feel from it you hear about you hear that you this this music that you've spent time making and you just go wow like it it was just cool to know that you know even somebody from a tiny little island can create a quite a decent rock album and you know it may sound a bit sort of tooting my own horn and things like that but you know if I'm not going to toot my horn then what's the point in even letting people know about these records and things because we're you know we put in some serious time and it came out fantastic pretty much see you soon